Hi guys, it's your science teacher here with a video. This time it is on C13, which is the Earth's atmosphere. Now this topic delves into looking at how the Earth's composition has changed over time and the effects that humans are having on the Earth's atmosphere currently and what we can do to slow that down and some of the effects that different atmospheric pollutants have on the environment. When looking at the composition of the Earth's atmosphere, you might be confused into thinking that oxygen is the most abundant gas in our atmosphere because that's what we use for respiration and that's what we breathe in. However, the most abundant gas in our atmosphere is actually nitrogen. Being such a stable element, it's hard to remove from our atmosphere and it accounts for around 78% of all of the gases in our atmosphere. The next largest chunk is oxygen, which we do breathe in, and that accounts for around 21% of the air. And the remaining 1% is made up of other gases, such as carbon dioxide and argon. And you might be surprised in seeing that carbon dioxide is such a small percent, but it is. And small differences uh, in the percentages can have massive effects on the planet. And that's why it's of such importance that we keep these gases in the same percentage amounts in our atmosphere. We know now the composition of the Earth's atmosphere today, but how did it become the atmosphere that it is today? And has it fluctuated throughout time? And were there any other gases that were more prominent in the atmosphere? The simple answer to that is yes. The Earth formed around 4.6 billion years ago. And when the Earth formed, it didn't have an atmosphere. Elements like helium and hydrogen firm formed the first atmosphere that we know about because they were two of the only elements that were around at that time because obviously they're being fused in stars and that's, that's remnants of uh, the star's fusion. Now, after some time, uh, the Earth started to calm down a little bit after being formed, but there was loads of volcanoes around. And volcanoes erupting uh, put tons and tons of methane, ammonia, water vapour and carbon dioxide into our atmosphere. And carbon dioxide was actually the most prominent gas uh, in the atmosphere during the early Earth's time. And this lasted for uh, millions and millions of years in this stage. Once it settled down a little bit, water started to condense, okay? When the volcanoes stopped erupting all around the surface of the Earth, water would condense in cracks in the Earth, and this formed the oceans. And the formations of oceans is what triggered life to start on planet Earth. It is thought that about 3.7 billion years ago, that's when the first algae came about. And algae are photosynthesizing organisms. That means that they produce oxygen. So as soon as algae came about, oxygen was put into our atmosphere. Now there's oxygen in our atmosphere. That means that the ammonium and also the methane that were really, really uh, prevalent in our atmosphere almost kind of disappeared as they reacted with the oxygen. For example, let's look at the reaction of ammonia with oxygen. That makes nitrogen and also water. So now you can see how nitrogen got into our atmosphere and nitrogen being such a stable element doesn't go away, okay? So that's why it's in such a high percentage in modern atmosphere. Now, once oxygen percentage had increased uh, enough, that's when dinosaurs started to come around. Uh, there was sea life living um, in the oceans. However, 240 million years ago, these are this is when the dinosaurs uh, roamed our planet. So you can see between 4.6 billion years ago to 250 million years ago till the first life forms appearing on land. 
Now I'm sure you're wondering where did all the CO2 go in our atmosphere? Some of it was absorbed by uh, the water when oceans formed. Some was used by photosynthesizing organisms. Most of the carbon dioxide is actually trapped in rocks, mainly sedimentary rocks, because of the fact they're made up of minerals that have reacted with carbon dioxide and they're trapped now underneath the ground. An example is limestone, which I've got a picture of here, which is also known as calcium carbonate. And you can prove that calcium carbonate is trapped in these rocks if you either heat them up uh, they will release the carbon dioxide and you can bubble it through lime water or you could add hydrochloric acid uh, to the limestone and it would release the carbon dioxide that way as well. You've probably heard about the amount of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere being a massive problem. And that's due to the fact that the amount of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere is increasing. And carbon dioxide is known as a greenhouse gas. And a greenhouse gas causes something called the greenhouse effect. And you're probably wondering what actually is the greenhouse effect. And it quite simply means that our atmosphere is working like a greenhouse. Now our atmosphere allows in heat and light from the sun. And that heat hits our earth and it warms it up. Now a lot of that heat is reflected off that earth and goes back out into space. However, some of it is trapped inside our atmosphere and it's trapped inside our atmosphere by greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide and methane. They are the two most abundant greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. Because carbon dioxide is such a effective greenhouse gas, just small percentage changes can have massive effects on the temperature, the global temperature. And the effect we're seeing now is called global warming. And that is the increase in temperature of the planet due to the greenhouse effect. When talking about global warming, you'll, you probably think about uh, polar bears and the fact that their sea ice is melting. However, they are not the only effects of global warming. Um, when considering global warming, I like to consider all of the effects. I like to consider the social, the health, the environmental, the economic and the political uh, effects of global warming. I remember that using the mnemonic of sheep. There will be many social um, problems due to global warming because of the fact homes will be displaced due to rising sea levels and also the extreme weather events that climate change causes, there might be more death okay, and more suffering. There will be many health impacts uh, to global warming as well. Places uh, which previously the mosquito couldn't reach carrying the malaria virus, uh, they might habitable for mosquitoes now. And that can mean that viruses uh, could spread faster due to global warming. There will of course be a massive economic problems due to uh, global warming and rising sea levels as rising sea levels could destroy some of the most uh, economic powerhouses in the world. Just think about New York. New York is on the coast, London, uh, de Janeiro, massive cities, okay? And just a small rise in sea level could see them cities under massive threat. Also, there's a massive concern for the environment. Many species can become extinct. That's because of the fact, uh, if they are an Arctic species, maybe they no longer have 
uh, sea ice such as the polar bear they're obviously finding it really tough with the amount of sea ice shrinking each year but even if you consider desert animals okay they already have limited water supplies and rising temperatures would mean a rise in drought in areas uh, in the desert and that could see many species wiped out even in dry climates. Global warming is also having a massive effect on politics now and it's affecting who gets voted in charge of your nation because they've got to consider uh, how much carbon dioxide they're putting into our atmosphere and they also need to uh, account for um, all the effects that carbon dioxide that country is emitting the effects that that's having on our environment. So as you can see, the effects of rising climate. So as you can see, the effects of a rising temperature on our planet are devastating. And just a small temperature rise can have really, really negative consequences. So we know about the pollutant carbon dioxide and the fact that it increases uh, global warming by being a greenhouse gas. However, how is it released into our atmosphere? We get carbon dioxide into our atmosphere because of the fact um, we are burning fossil fuels. And fossil fuels were a store of carbon dioxide and we are releasing it back when we uh, burn fossils such as coal, petrol, uh, methane and propane that we use in barbecues. Now carbon dioxide isn't the only pollutant we're putting into our atmosphere where we burn fossil fuels. We are putting in many different gases as well. Uh, and an example of one gas that we put into our atmosphere when we burn fossil fuels is sulfur dioxide. And sulfur dioxide is a massive problem in our atmosphere because it causes acid rain and acid rain has many effects on our environment okay uh, it causes the ph of soils to change which can decimate forest and it also can get into the river ecosystems and change the phs of rivers killing uh, many fish and that's just the start of the gases we're going to look at there's also methane, which is put into our atmosphere. And methane usually comes from uh, farming livestock, okay? Uh, when you farm livestock on a real large scale, uh, they are putting into our atmosphere a lot of methane. Just think of that smell you can uh, smell when you go past the farm. That's actually methane you're smelling. And that causes global warming as well which obviously attributes to the rising sea levels and the more extreme weather events, which we looked at all the effects uh, that they could have as well on the social health, economic environment and political aspects on the earth. Now let's look at another pollutant now, uh, nitrogen dioxide. And nitrogen dioxide gets into our atmosphere through burning fossil fuels and once it's in our atmosphere, it can be incredibly bad, okay, because uh, when we breathe it in, it can cause many respiratory problems. An example of one of the respiratory problems it can cause is bronchitis. As well as carbon dioxide, you also get carbon monoxide, uh, which is formed from incomplete combustion of fossil fuels. Um, that's why we actually use something called catalytic converters to make sure that all the carbon monoxide is converted uh, to carbon dioxide. Um, and carbon monoxide is a toxic gas. And it can cause many respiratory problems as well. As carbon monoxide replaces oxygen when it binds the hemoglobin in blood. Carbon monoxide is also known as a greenhouse gas, meaning it accounts to some of the greenhouse effect. And the last one we're going to look at is carbon particulates. And that's also made uh, by incomplete combustion of fossil fuels. Uh, often things like coal produce quite a lot of carbon particulates. And you might have actually seen carbon particulates on the side of a road, that black stuff. Uh, if you were to run your finger along the side of the road, uh, that's what you'd see. And carbon particulates 
are also carcinogenic, meaning they can cause cancer if you um, breathe in too much of them. And they can also cause some respiratory problems and asthma. Now that is the end of the video on the Earth's atmosphere. Please remember if you like the video to drop it a like and remember to subscribe to the channel.